Good morning. I'm Pastor Ashley Osborne, pastor at Valley of Peace Lutheran Church located in Golden Valley, Minnesota. We are an ELCA congregation and a Reconciling in Christ congregation, which means we welcome and celebrate all people, and all people are welcome to participate in our time together. So even as we gather online, your presence enriches this time of worship, and we give thanks to God that God is present in and through all of us as well. It is good to be together on this Sunday, May 10th, for our worship service. If you would like a bulletin for this service, please go to valleyofpeace.org, and at the top of the homepage, you'll find the bulletin for today's service. I will also say that later in the service, we'll be lighting five candles, and if you would like to participate with this, I invite you at this time to look for five candles in your home so that we can, we can participate together in our worship service. Know that today, as we gather together, we recognize that it is Mother's Day, which for some is a day of celebration, but we also acknowledge for some is a day of struggle as well. So know that we are holding you in prayer. We are both celebrating with you, and we are holding in prayer those who struggle on days like today. Know that God is with you as well, and know that we are with you also. As we begin our time of worship in our homes, we move into a time of preparing our hearts and minds for worship. So this could look like lighting a candle to acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit in your space. It could look like wrapping yourself in a shawl or a blanket as a reminder that you're wrapped with the love of God. It could look like finding a sacred image that invokes a type of prayer or a reflection for you as well. So we'll take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship, and then our service will continue with special music, which also helps prepare our hearts and minds for worship. we gather this morning, I want us to have a thanksgiving for baptism, because as we'll hear in our scripture reading, Paul writes to the early church about the promises of baptism, and so we'll have our thanksgiving of baptism at this time. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and God's forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, 
and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, your grace, and your love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. For our prayer of the day, we will have a prayer celebrating the church. And so whenever you hear the word church in this prayer, I invite you to type your name into the chat function of Facebook so that we can see who is with us as the with the church on this day. We are the church. The tall and the small, the young and the old, the wise and the fooling. We are the church. But in being so, may we learn from each other, have ears open to the good news and hearts open to be God's family. We are the church. A family, a body, a place to be ourselves, a new way of living, a community of forgiveness, a song in the world, a story of renewal. We are the church. Amen. Good morning. My name is Barb Michelson. Although since it's Mother's Day, some of you may know me as mom or grandma. So happy Mother's Day to everyone out there. Today I would like to start with reading uh, just a part of the Bible verses for today. It goes like this. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. This was the Apostle Paul writing to the people in the city of Corinth. He had heard that they were quarreling and arguing and not getting along. And he wanted to show them that even if you have different ideas, you can still be friends. Now, I imagine that you might have some friends or people that you know that you don't always get along with. I have pictures of some people here, and I'm noticing that these pictures have different shapes, so I'm kind of wondering if they are going to fit together into maybe a puzzle. We'll see. Some of you might have friends that just like to study all the time, and you would rather get out and play a little bit too. But maybe you can take turns, get your studies done, and then go and play, something like that. Some of you might have friends that like like to play and laugh and play games all the time. Um, so it's hard to get your studying done with them. But maybe you can talk about it and figure something out. Some of you might have friends that like to do sports and games and are very active all the time. Um, again, maybe you can take turns doing different things with those friends. Some of you might have friends that have moms. And some of you might have friends that have dads. And some friends have both moms and dads. But everybody can, of course, be friends. Let's see. I am noticing that these puzzle pieces have something on the back. Whoops, I'll turn it around there. I wonder what will happen if I put the puzzle together backwards instead of frontwards with the faces. 
Let's see. Some of you might have friends like this little boy who are a little bit sad. Maybe that's the best time to be a friend. And some of you may have friends that either don't exactly look like you or maybe go to a different church. But of course, you can be friends. Those are maybe the best friends to have because you can learn different things from each other. Well, I have this puzzle put together. Let's see what we have come up with. Let's see. I think, I think it turned into a puzzle of the world. Just to remind us that there are so many people in the world with different ideas and different ways of doing things, but we can all get along and be friends if we talk to each other and listen to each other. Let's say a little prayer to finish up here. Thank you, God, for the wonderful variety of people in our world. Please help us to get along with each other and keep us safe. Amen. Bye-bye. Today's reading is from 1 Corinthians. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by close people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The word of the Lord. As I preach this morning, I wanted to preach in the opposite direction, so that as I preach, you can look out on the empty pews, the pews that are usually filled Sunday after Sunday with our community of faith. These last two Sundays, as we moved in this time of Easter, we've been talking about what the early church looked like. Last week, we read about the early church in the book of 1 Thessalonians, and we heard about the persecutions and the disagreements and the disruptions that were happening outside of the community. And Paul calls them back to remember their call as children of God. Now today we hear a similar call, yet the disagreements that are happening are not happening outside of this new community. They're happening inside of this community. As people are disagreeing with one another, as they're following different leaders, you hear this in our text when Paul acknowledges to them, I hear that some of you say you were baptized by this person, or you were baptized by this person, or you were baptized by this person. So you can see disagreements shaping up in this community of faith. Now, like the early church, we also have times of disagreements. We also have times where we don't all think the same way or have the same opinion. And yet, Paul's words to this church are words that are similar to us as well. Paul invites them to reflect on two things. The first is that the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ was for all not just for a particular person or group or leader or church, but it was for all. And then Paul invites them to think back on their baptism, not the person who baptized them, but that they were baptized with the same promises of Jesus Christ. That in the baptismal waters, not only were they called children of God, but they were united as one body of Christ here in this world. So today, I want to invite you to think about your baptism. Where were you baptized? Do you know the date of when you were baptized? How old were you when you were baptized? 
And how do you continue to reflect on those baptismal promises? Often you'll hear me say when I preside over a baptism that I invite folks to remember their baptism every year that they're baptized. And in fact, Martin Luther called us to remember our baptism daily. Now as the water or the weather is getting nicer and we have opportunities to water our gardens or be outside playing in sprinklers, this is the perfect time to remember your baptism. That any time you are around water, washing your hands, washing your face, playing in the water with children or grandchildren, take a moment and make the sign of the cross on your forehead, remembering how much God loves you. And then take a moment and remember how much God loves the people that surround you, the people that surround you both now and the people that surround you in this place. Paul's call to us today is not only to remember our baptism, but to speak the truth of this baptism. That in this baptism, we are all united and called children of God. We are all made equal before God. This is powerful and good news. And I love how Paul closes our reading today, where he says, this will seem like foolishness to others. Because part of what it means to be the church is not only to remember our baptism, but to remember the baptism of all of those that gather with us each week. To know that just as we are called and gifted by the Holy Spirit, so too are our neighbors in faith. So too are the other people we worship with and we gather with and we pray for. And so I invite you to think about how it is that you remember the baptism and the call of our community of faith. Again, Paul does not gloss over the disagreements and the divisions. And I don't think we are called to either. We are called to be honest with one another. And that honesty, when there is a disagreement, begins by acknowledging you are called by God, I am called by God, and then also acknowledging the places where we have failed, where we have hurt others, and the places where our world is divided as well. This is often why Sunday after Sunday we begin our worship with our confession and forgiveness, acknowledging that we are in need of God's grace. And to others, this does seem foolish. To others in the world, when you compare yourselves with who is the strongest, who has the most money, who has the most power, who is truly in charge, you see leaders trying to act out of their own sense of self and bringing down others. Where in the church, our call is to encourage one another, to remember these baptismal promises for us and for others, and to know that God has called us together in this community of faith. Now, part of my favorite parts of the baptismal service is the lighting of the baptismal candle. Because we share the words from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. We are called to let our light shine. And when our light shines, that sometimes means we will see the hidden places of disagreements and despair and suffering. And we are called to bring the power and the good news of Christ in those places. In just a bit, we're going to move forward with a ritual of lighting the candles and acknowledging the places of divisions in our world. As we light the candles, there'll be a time of silence as we both confess those divisions that no longer unite us. And then we'll light a candle as a sign of hope, of hope that we, through the power and the grace of God, may work to bring light to the world and to all people. As we pray for a world divided, may our silences hold our confession and the light reflect our hope. For the nations who speak too much about differences and too little about our rich diversity, we pray. For the people who live in prejudice and seek an exclusive God, we pray. For the church broken by schism and the creeds that divide us, we pray.
for the people ignored in our communities and churches through gender, sexuality, culture, creed, we pray. for our neighborhoods and divided communities who have forgotten their common life, we pray. Hear us, hold us, renew us again. May we find in the deeper truths between us the same questions, the same traveling to be done, the same uncertainty, and the same Christ crucified. May we find our common meeting place in cross and resurrection, in love beyond death, in all our hopes for the church and for each other. So be it. Amen. Let us pray. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Regardless of background, opinion, theology, or ability, we all belong to you, O Lord. Speak over our stubbornness and certainty that we are right, and show us instead what it looks like to practice a radical love which truly listens to and respects others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your creation is a perfect model of the interdependence we all share as your children. When we fail to acknowledge our fundamental connections, everyone and everything suffers as a consequence. Bring us back to ourselves, to each other, and to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all who celebrate Mother's Day and give strength and guidance to all who parent or mentor the young. As you tend and care for us, so may we look after those who are depending on us. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Send the power and comfort of your healing spirit to all those whom we know need it, especially those who we name out loud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Together with all your saints in light, we join our voices in praise to the one who forgives, redeems, and joins us all in one eternal fellowship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May all these things be granted in the name of our Savior Jesus, who earnestly prayed that we might all be one. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This is the time in the service where if we were gathered together, we would be passing the offering plates. And so I still invite us to have an offering pause to reflect on the gifts God has first given us and the gifts we offer to our families, our communities, and to the world. Now this offering plate is empty this Sunday, but I know that the gifts you are offering are rich in your households and rich in our community of faith. Thank you to the people who are offering gifts that we don't even know. Thank you to the gifts shared from our volunteers for this service. Thank you for people who are calling one another, reminding us of our call to be children of God. Thank you to the leaders in our congregation who are continuing to serve in these unique times. If you are able to give a financial gift, we would welcome that gift as well. You can give financially to Valley of Peace by mailing in your offering. We still have folks counting offering. You can also give electronically by going to valleyofpeace.org and signing up for electronic giving or giving a one-time gift. And you can also text to give. That number will be here on the screen. Thank you, thank you, thank you for full offering plates, even if we can't see them now. As we end our time of worship, may you receive this blessing. United in worship, we are the church, a family, a body, a place to be ourselves, a new way of living, a community of forgiveness, a song in the world, a story of renewal. As we end this time of worship, let us continue to be all these things out in the community we call home. Thanks be to God. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you God's everlasting and almighty peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Mother of us all. Go in peace. Remember your baptism. Thanks be to God. <laughs>